Chris, uh, I didn't write this this afternoon. <laughs> Probably started working on it 25 years ago, refining it piece by piece. I was going to give you a historical repeat of the Glenn Lecture, but I decided you could look that one up somewhere. Probably on my probably on my website, uh, but what I'm going to try and do is to just encapsulate, extract a few things of what I uh, presented to the uh, Human Spaceflight Review uh, Group, the Augustine Commission. Uh, John F. Kennedy implored us to ask not what our country could do for us but what we could do for our country. I believe we need to ask the same from our space program. So I say not what our country can do for the space program, but ask what can our space program do for the country. If we ask this question of our current spacecraft, space program, I think the answer is clear. Our space program is asking what the nation can do for it, not what it can do for the nation. I come from an era in which our space program did great things to the nation. I truly believe that it can do great things for the country once again. Here are a few observations I've made. The U.S. has opened the moon for further exploration and development. The international community is prepared to pursue this path. The ISS is now ready to be used to advance our ability to operate and to cooperate in space. The space shuttle is a proven human flight, is a proven human flight vehicle. The international space community is rapidly maturing its ability to cooperate on large-scale endeavors. Appropriate challenging objectives can stimulate development of valuable national and global capabilities. Each spacefaring nation, including the U.S., has limited resources to devote to human space exploration and development. I do not believe that the current policy comes close to achieving these goals. I think that all of you uh, know that I've been writing and thinking about various things about human exploration for quite a while. I have a lot of ideas. Sometimes I realize that some of my ideas tend to get lost in the details. So let me see if I can distill these ideas into three fairly straightforward goals for U.S. human spaceflight. This is an artist's rendition that came from my latest children's book. This obviously is the red planet, and this is a rendition of Phobos, I think the strategic gateway to Mars. First, the U.S. cannot afford to see human space transportation leadership. We must retain the capability to transport crew to the station. I believe we have no choice but to extend the shuttle until a state-of-the-art crew transportation system is available, and I think we should capitalize on the dynamism of the commercial market to develop a runway landing system which can truly become the basis for the U.S. highway to space. I think we have three that we could consider very carefully. The X-37, the X-38, and the HL-20. Second, I worry that we are caught in an unproductive race to the moon. We should be using the lunar program to accomplish foreign policy goals. So let's focus on cooperation with our international partners and use our resources for robotic science and commercial development on the moon. And third, 
and most importantly, we should direct the focus of NASA efforts on establishing a pathway to a permanent human presence on Mars by the early 2030s. I firmly believe that accomplishing these three goals will do more to advance U.S. national interest than any other policy initial, initiative we could envision. Orion is inappropriate for ISS support up and down on performance and cost ground. We need a strategy which will eliminate dependence on foreign providers for transport to the ISS and lead to the development of a state-of-the-art food transportation system. I think the only approach is by using vertical takeoff and horizontal landing systems. And in the interim, I see no option but to extend shuttle operations until a new system is available. It doesn't necessarily mean adding more shuttle missions. We can stretch missions out to one-year intervals and occupy the people in between on the development of new mini shuttles and the new launch system. A key element of my approach is to focus near-term resources on the development of an exploration module, XM, which can serve as a crew habitat for long-duration missions and will later serve as the basis for crew landing systems. Combining these transportation pathways for stepping stones to the Phobos and Mars system will ensure that the U.S. leads the development of humans as a multi-planetary species. There can be no more noble purpose. The U.S. must lead where it matters most, providing the systems to safely transport people across space. Don't repeat Apollo. Avoid competition to be second to the moon. The U.S. has little to gain, much to lose from competition. China or India has much to gain, but little to lose. Craft new relationships with international partners by developing the moon as a shared resource which furthers foreign policy goals, maintains U.S. leadership in lower Earth orbit and at the moon. And we establish an infrastructure for commercial development and scientific discoveries. Limit U.S. government expenditure, encourage private investment. Permanent presence on the Mars, on Mars, as early as 2031. Utilize the ISS as a test bed for exploration technology and operations. Near Earth objects and comets as near term achievable exploration opportunities. Missions to focus the inner moon of Mars to manage robotic infrastructure and deployment on the surface of Mars. Could I have a, a dazzling creation slide? Maybe? 